let's talk about function notation. So function notation consists of a few, a few things. First of all, the name. And oftentimes we use F, but we can have lots of different letters. And it depends on, you know, if we want the function to have some real world value, real world application, we might name it with a letter that has to do with the application. Um, if we just have lots of functions, we obviously don't want to name them all the same thing. That would be confusing. So again, obvious, uh, oftentimes you'll see F as the most common name. This is the name of the function, okay? So the part in parentheses is the input. Okay. That's what goes there. So, again, a lot of times that's X, especially when you're starting out. But, you know, maybe you've got a, a you say, well, I want to know the height of the ball I throw in the air as a function of time. Well, maybe you'd name that H of T. You'd say, I want to know the height, so I'm going to name the function H. And uh, the time was my input, so I plug in the time and it spits out the Height. So you have lots of options here. There's nothing you know magical about the way you name these things. It's just again, oftentimes a nice way to kind of keep things straight. Um, so then we often will say, okay, my function f with input x, we name we call this f of x function of because it's a function of the x value. So f of x is equal to, and then we have you know a, a function, a, an equation. So Let's say, I said, well, what's f of 3 then? What this means is, what is the function's value? Okay, What is the value of f when I plug in 3 for x? That's all that means. What is the value of f when x is 3? So I'm going to write this kind of out the long way, my function was 4x plus 2, so this is saying it's going to be 4 times 3 plus 2. I, I just plug 3 in to my function. Well, that's 14. So if I said, well, what's f of negative 7? That's saying, what's the value of f when x is negative 7? So that would be 4 times negative 7. It's negative 28 plus 2 is negative 26. So that's, that's the basics of function notation. Now, a different way we can write this is we can write f of x is equal to 26. Well, this is, now, we don't know x. We're saying, what is x when the function's value is 26? So now, rather than plugging in something for x, instead we say, well, I know my function is 4x plus 2. How would I, what x would I plug in to get 26? Well, subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 4, x is equal to 6. So you got to be careful here kind of where that number is. This is kind of an algebra, you know, testing your, your note, your use of functions that you know right here you say well if I, if the number is here they're telling me the input they're telling me what to plug in for my variable but if instead that it's left as an x and equal they're saying I want to know the variable that gives me an answer of 26 okay let's expand this just a little bit now I have a second function. I'm calling this one g. Again, just not to be confusing. I don't want to have two functions named f. But I have my function g, and I've defined that. Again, the input is still an x, but x squared minus 4x. So if I were to say, well, what's g of 3? Again, the input is that number in parentheses. So I would say, all right, well, 3 squared minus 4 times 3. You have to plug 3 in for both spots, right? We have to plug it in both here and here because that's where the x appears. So 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 3. So 9 minus 12 is negative 3. So if I said, you know, what's g of negative 4? 
Well, that would be negative 4 squared. I'm using parentheses because the negative 4 times negative 4, when you square it, you'll get positive 16. And uh, you have to be careful when you type that into your calculator to use parentheses. So negative 16, or excuse me, 16 minus negative 16. So it's 16, that is 32. Okay, so this is the way we use functions. So be very careful, you know, uh, where the number appears. Again, if the number is in the parentheses, you're saying this is the input. You know, right here, 3 is what I'm putting in place of x. That is my input. Plug it in, get your answer out. If instead it was, the, you know, the example I did where it was f of x equals, I'll make up a different one here, uh, 30. We're saying we know the answer is 30. What is the input? What do I put in for x to get 30? So this is a solving thing. This is saying I need to figure out what x is that gets 30 as an answer. Let's do one more thing with this. Let's talk about how we might do both things. We call this function composition. Now, think about parentheses. You know, we always start on the inside parentheses and work our way out. So you can see, if we were to read this, we would say we're doing f of g of 2. Every time there's kind of those parentheses with a function, we're saying f of g of 2. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the inside. We're going to start by just figuring out what is g of 2. So let's just think about that. If we did g of 2, we'd have 2 squared minus 4 times 2. So we'd have 4 minus 8. We'd have negative 4. So this right here is equal to negative 4. Well, then we just drop down a step and we say, okay, I've evaluated the inside and I got negative 4 as an answer. Now we plug negative 4 into f. So 4 times negative 4 plus 2 would be negative 14. Again, this is called function composition. Let's do one more real quick. Let's do a g of f of 7. So again, we always start on the inside. We'd say, okay, start with f of 7. So f of 7 is going to be equal to 4 times 7 plus 2. That is 30. So then we jump down. We say, all right, I know what's inside those parentheses. It's 30 g of 30 is equal to 30 squared minus 4 times 30. Now let me check my mental math. That's going to be 900 minus 120 for 780. So this is how we work with functions and how we can do some simple compositions. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe for more math help.